Hey there, what's up everybody? This is Josh with Service Business Mastery Podcast. Sitting next to me virtually is Church. We are coming to you on a Friday because we had some scheduling issues on Wednesday. Um, we've been, well, I've been personally trying to get Matt on the show and it's just never really worked out. Um, and then Matt, Matt's been busy and then Tersh and I have been traveling and stuff like that. So it's just never worked out to get him on the show. But this is a, uh, I, what I think is a very interesting topic because we see this come up in different Facebook groups and it's the struggle between hiring agencies versus internal marketing teams and managing those. And how does that dynamic work so you can grow your business? And Matt is a director of marketing for uh, a company. Uh, actually, it's, it's a it's a group of uh, five brands now, and he can go over that when we bring him on. But that group, uh, he manages different marketers, both internal and external. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about the dynamic and maybe some other stuff because Matt uh, has some opinions on things that uh, I think you guys will all appreciate and stuff like that because he comes from the contractor side. So he's in marketing, but not on the digital marketing side like mine, like a, as an agency. So I think he's going to have some unique insights that everyone's going to get some value from today. Yeah, I like the, the thought process of treating your marketing company, marketing agency as an employee. Um, so I'm curious how that thought process is going to go with actually hiring, uh, a, you know, CMO um, per, or something to that, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. No, but I, I, I like <laughs> I like watching you try to explain it. Yeah, I'll just beat around the bush until something makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> cool. Well, before we get started, uh, Josh, I want to give a shout out to uh, partners of the show. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have a couple sponsors for the show, as if you guys have been listening recently. So Sarah uh, is one of our premier sponsors, and uh, we love their platform. Uh, it, it's it's all designed to help with making your business run smoother and give you the numbers that you need to know versus a ton of data splattered on a wall, and you're trying to figure it out. So um, Billy is a, a fantastic guy. Uh, I've actually talked to a couple other team members about other questions that I have on my side. They've all been very helpful and uh, he has got a great team over there. So, um, and company cam is something that I enjoy, especially on the marketing side, because uh, it integrates with your favorite CRMs, but it gives you a lot more data and stuff that you can use with your photos, including remarketing those photos before and afters, getting them to your Google business profile, uh, getting them on your website. Um, the geo coordinates and stuff that are on the photos stay with the photos versus get stripped which is always nice, a uh, little, little getting a little deep in the weeds, but uh, company cam's got some great support. Anytime we see their name mentioned in any group, everybody's like, I love those guys. They're mm -hmm. great. They're, the support is awesome. Um, so we're very blessed to have some really great sponsors for the show. Yeah. And I'd like to add, uh, if you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you have a question for us, we get questions all the time, emails or LinkedIn, whatever. And um, sometimes people have a hard time of figuring out where to ask those questions. Well, if you go to our website, servicebusinessmastery.com, and in the bottom right, uh, you can just click the button and it says record your message and you can just leave us a voice memo and ask your question. And then uh, Josh or myself will respond with another voice message. So, uh, and yeah. if you just want to have fun and send us something really crazy, feel free to do that as well. Cause that, that sounds like it would be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. But yeah, if we love to hear back from everybody. Um, uh, also if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the show. It's, it's how we, you know, there's clearly something wrong with you if you haven't subscribed yet. So figure it out and subscribe to the show or else <laughs> right <laughs> all right let's get started with the show are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven figure revenue mark do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way let tersh blissett and josh crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at service business mastery Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. 
here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Hey, hey Matt. Matt, how's it going? Nice, nice little intro there. Yeah, well, that was it's it was totally planned out. We had a, we had a pre written, so. <laughs> Sounds but, like a bit, uh, Matt, I feel like you and I have been talking for a while trying to yeah. set this up, and it was finally like, stop talking about it, just figure something out. And it happened right. to uh, coincide with a schedule change on Wednesday because I didn't realize our baseball games were so early. And uh, here we are. We finally got you on the show. So welcome. Thank you. It's a it's a pleasure being on. I'm sure we'll have fun with this conversation. So yeah, I, like Josh is much more familiar. Y'all have a relationship. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, for anybody who doesn't might not know who you are, um, your background and all that good jazz. Can you share a little bit about that? What makes you an expert? Yeah, totally. So um, right out of college, graduated from Butler here in Indianapolis, uh, went right into the trades. So I had a year long internship at Delta Fawcett Company on their retail uh, team. Uh, however, you know, it was it was 2010. Housing market hadn't quite recovered yet. So things were still frozen there from a hiring perspective. So uh, ended up going to work for a distributor here. I was a territory manager for Carrier, um, just working with different dealers, um, bringing them on board, working with some larger established dealers and all that fun stuff. Um, then made the decision that I wanted to go work on the e-commerce side. So I went to work with uh, Will. At, it's now Contractor Commerce. Before that, it was the e-commerce platform uh, for selling oh, yeah. filters, humidifiers, all that fun stuff online and helped him build that business. Um was business development manager there, but not in the traditional sense of like a, a BDR. Um, this was more of a working contract negotiations with the various manufacturers, getting product, finding the right product, what makes sense with Google shopping and all that fun stuff and getting them into the feeds and all that fun jazz. So mm-hmm. did that for a couple of years, had a hell of a time building up that business. That was fun. That was a lot of fun, high pace. It was, it was good. Now, did you go to Columbus? Because that's where he's located, isn't he? I was living over in Monroe, well, Centerville, I lived, but his location is in Monroe, Ohio, which is right between Dayton and Cincinnati. Mm. So, yeah, I was over in Ohio at the time. Uh, then I went to work for a, I wanted to really get on the contracting side, man. I just could tell, like, this is this is the fun part, fun side to be on. Uh, so I went to work for a smaller regional contractor. Uh, we had a location in Cincinnati and Lexington. Um, worked there for a few years, then was like, well, you know, I haven't been on the agency side. Let's try that. Um, so, so ended up going to be vice president of marketing for an agency uh, here in Indianapolis, wanted to move back closer to family. Uh, both my wife and I have family here in Indiana. Uh, so we want to get back to, to Indianapolis. So found a good fit there, a marketing agency for the home services industry, essentially. Uh, and they have a B2B wing as well. Um, but did that for, for a few years, and then the opportunity arose to come here to Max Service Group, and it's been one hell of a ride. Ton of fun. And so now what do you... For almost four years, right? Yeah, three and a half. Three and and a what half. do you do there? So I am the vice president of brand experience. So um, we have the marketing, obviously marketing, recruiting, client care, dispatch, um, follow-ups, client assurance, all report through a manager or a director that then reports up through me. Um, but really just really working with some really awesome people, have hell of a leadership team, hell of a management team, uh, just helping remove roadblocks for them so they can be as successful as possible. And ultimately the team becomes as successful as possible. That's awesome. So, and you guys are, so you, th- this is, this position is, it been like the last six months, right? You were the director of marketing prior yep. to that, um, which you guys, you guys have a, a mix. Can you want to kind of talk us through like how you guys go about doing your marketing and what that looks like? So, yeah. because I know this is always a struggle because it's, it's like hire an agency, don't hire an agency. And it's like, it's like Republican Democrats, one right. or the other, not both. And I think there's definitely, and you probably will agree with me. There's a, there's, there's always a middle ground somewhere. Oh, sure. <laughs> For sure. And it depends where your business is, right? And when you're smaller and maybe you don't have someone internally that, that really understands marketing from a holistic perspective, um, it makes sense then to use use an agency that is able to um, you know, ha- have multiple people with different specialties to be able to work on your business. Um, however, as, as you grow, then you start finding ways that it actually becomes more efficient for you and you can get more output if you bring a job internally. So like right now, um, 
and we're budgeted to end up between 95 and 100 million in revenue. Um, we're we have as a marketing team, obviously myself, kind of setting the overall strategy. Uh, then we have. Um, Kevin, who does, our, he's our digital marketing manager. Then we have Danny, she's our senior graphic designer. We have Judy, who does all of our media buys across all of our markets for billboards, TV, radio, um, OTT, all the, all the fun stuff, all the media stuff um, that there's no way I would be able to figure it out. So she does that. Um, then we have a social media and community involvement manager that just focuses on our, on our giving to the community and then also our social media channels. Uh, as well of making sure we get that content, feed that content through. We don't push promotions on on social media very much, specifically from a newsfeed perspective. If anything, it may be an ad here or there. Um, but really, it's it's hey, here's how we're involved in the community. It's, we understand that the relationships have to be deep in the community. They're they're not just spread wide. Um, so when you say that, let, how do you do that when you've recently acquired a business? Mm -hmm. Uh, from building the deep relationships or yeah, 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 yeah. in the community. Yeah, yeah, totally. So we're very strategic about our approach um, and what we can do. Uh, sorry. I just had two people were <laughs> waving to me through the window that work remote that were just saying, Hey, so sorry. Um, no, good. Anyways, we, we are very strategic about our community giving. And whenever we make an acquisition, part of that plan, the marketing plan going into it is our is our community involvement and how we're going to give into that local community. So everything is mapped out over 12 months. Uh, we have we know what we're what amounts we're giving to charities, how many charities we're impacting, and we're very strategic about the charities that we choose. They're all local. We do not give to necessarily national organizations uh, because we want the dollars going back into the communities that we serve. Uh, because we realize these dollars are given to us by the community, they need to be invested back into the community. Um, so we're very we are very strategic and purposeful about our giving, and it that's the biggest thing. You just got to put. Put put the dollars, put a plan together, and put someone in charge to to be able to hold the company accountable to fulfilling the promises of the community that you set in place. Yeah, I love that, especially the local part. Um, now, myself being on the SEO side, and I know you know this, mm -hmm. but links from local, you know, them mentioning them your on your website mm -hmm. on their website that they locally gave sponsorship or they have a spot for you on there and stuff like that too can be very powerful in, in the digital sense. So it, it not only does all the feel goods, right? right. The feel goods, the socials get nice exposure. Right. You may even get some local television or radio exposure yep. from that because you never know who is part of these charities, right? right? There's always somebody, uh, but there is some nice digital exposure that that stuff really ties to as well. That, uh, kind of puts a nice bow on everything. So it's it's something that I think more contractors should start looking at. It don't, it don't, sure. don't feel like you have to get ten thousand dollars. Like no, if if you got five hundred bucks yeah. and that is all you can do this year for one charity, find one that's close to your heart and yep. donate to them and yep. set it up and talk to them and start developing a relationships and yep. and start giving your time if if nothing yep. else. Yeah, and I, it, here's the thing: if you're giving genuinely. Karma's going to work in your favor. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's all gonna it's all gonna come back in in the positives. We don't approach it from a perspective of we we need we require a link or a, a shout out to be able to do this. But we know if we set this up properly with the charity, um, that and we we give genuinely, that mm -hmm. it's all going to work out in the end. And we set things up from a position to be able to encourage the charity to be involved. So we we do um, all of our giving is a match. So we'll say we will match up oh, to that's cool. dollar amount because then that allows then the charity to utilize um, your your brand and your platform to help get additional giving. And then we have a part of our social media spend um, that is allocated to promoting that link to the giving. Um, and we just say, hey, charity, we've partnership this month. We give a brief intro. Then we give the link um to the giving and just let our even let our let our fans right become their fans yeah. and uh and, and help utilize our our network to be able to help drive additional giving giving to their charity because y'all do it do do they don't have marketing budgets most most definitely no exactly so and, their and marketing budget for that month now do you do a different uh nonprofit each month yeah 
there are a few that we may, depending on what their need is or how our relationship is, we may do a couple times a year. But in general, it's a different theme each month. So it may be, um, you know, youth, youth in need. That's a big one for us. You know, damn, man, these 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 kids, they just need a chance, right? They just need yeah. a little bit of hope to be able to to springboard their their future, and then they're going to be a kick ass human being, mm -hmm. like us that that's important we we got to help them right that that is our job as adults in society is to help them become the best versions of themselves possible because they may not have the support structure at home or they may not have a support structure at all um, so matt let me ask you something at, for like a i'm mm -hmm. thinking small small business just yeah. starting out mm -hmm. uh because you've already you know you're, the group has already reached the almost a legacy status mm -hmm. as far as size and, and revenue wise. Um, is that a wise decision to make if you are, I mean, just starting out? And if, if so, like, how are you budgeting to, to give back? Cause the, the givers gain, you know, philosophy, I mean, it's, it's real. Um, as long as you're not trying to game it. Um, right. but at the same time, it's like, I have, I personally, I mean, we we're philanthropists at heart, my wife and I, and um, we could give ourselves into bankruptcy. You know yeah. what I mean? And so you have to be careful, especially as soon as they hear, as soon as some people hear that you're willing to do this, then all of a sudden it's like, Boof. oh, we get a ton of mail. We get a ton of mail on on giving opportunities. But here's the key, though: you 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 build it in as part of your budget. Like that should be just a standard business practice of what what is your your budget that you're going to be giving back to the community. Um, and then if you think about it, if you yourself or have a servant heart and you're doing this and this is part of your business plan, you're going to attract people of similar of, of similar kind. Right. And, and so that that's really helpful because you're, you're then bringing on people that believe in what you're doing. It's almost it's even a, an internal tool. Right. Mm -hmm. It'll say, hey, guys, this is what we're doing. This is the this is the charity we were able to take part in. This is um, this is this is a, a family in need that we've been able to help it, help and give them a free HVAC system. Or we just did last month a, a free water heater to um, a first responder. Uh, and people submitted stories that they had of a, of a first responder that has impacted their life. We're going to do the same for teachers. We're going to, we do families in need all the time. That's really where we keep our, our kind of charity uh, free HVAC systems really focused towards families in need. Um, and like the stories that you're going to get, like your team it comes becomes so invested yeah. in what you're doing. And their why of why they're waking up and going to work every day, right? Simon Sinek's book starts with why is mm -hmm. a, a huge book for me. Um, yeah. And just being able to understand that why and have that why not only be part of the business and the company, but of the team, that's incredibly, that's incredibly impactful. I mean, we had, gosh, I could share story after story, but we had one where we gave, um, there was a mother, the family was in need financial, they had financial needs, but we were able to give them a, a free HVAC system. And, and it was for the last, well, we ended up finding out where her last weeks of her life and the wow. stuff, the stuff that we were, you know, we shared, we shared that story of, because we want our team to know when, that, why they're going to work every day. This is, this is part of why we're going to work every day. And we share that story. And then, you know, it, it was heartbreaking, but I even think, Helped straight the comfort, the, you know, the comfort that you provided in their last days, like that's just going to be something that the family's going to remember forever. Well, yeah, and and, and just the the the, the team members and and they become invested and they understand that why. And then you know, we, we unfortunately sent an email giving them an update on on what happened that she had passed away, and it's like that was terrible, heartbreaking news to share. Mm -hmm. But it strengthened it strengthened the mission of the group. Uh, entirely. Yeah. And that's, th those are the intangibles of, of giving. I never want to see someone have to lose their life. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. the intangibles of giving are that, that people are coming to work with more of a purpose and they, they, they're, it makes them part of something bigger than just yeah, they're, a they're pr company. And they're proud of it. It's like, right, totally. you get to, you, yeah, I'm a part of this, like, and, and gives them that ownership and, in that, you know, 
you're good. That's that's awesome. I like. Well, that, they just uh, don't. They don't feel like the uh, their boss is just taking all the money that they made. <laughs> right. That's true. Well, <laughs> right. so here's here's my question, and 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 this is just one one part of marketing, but mm -hmm. um, so and I understand the local giving giving mm -hmm. to local charity organizations. Absolutely. Um, what happens if you have a strong desire to um support like a leukemia and lymphoma society? obviously they do like man and woman of the year mm -hmm. walks and everything else. So they don't, they generate a ton of, ton of money. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand completely that the local, the local um, nonprofits and charities need our money more. Right. Uh, but what happens if you have team members who have been personally supported mm -hmm. by like leukemia and lymphoma society? Um, I think you take those as a, on a one-off basis. I, I don't okay. think, I don't think there's anything wrong. Don't get me yeah, wrong. I don't yeah, think yeah. there's anything wrong with giving. Giving giving genuinely is giving genuinely. We've just made the decision to go local. And so like, but one other way you can look at it, um, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And True. we're not we're not going to necessarily give to some of the big organizations, but we found an, an organization um, that we've given to in the past that she makes scarves for uh, women that are going through breast cancer. And it's more of a comforting thing, right? It, it, this is, this is, it, it's almost a, a, it's symbolic to them, right? So instead of going with a big national organization, we found a local one that still supports the cause of breast cancer awareness, mm -hmm. but from a different perspective and one that then goes locally. And who, that organization just happens to send these scarves to uh, all across the world now. Um, mm. And, but it, you go to their building and it's, it's, it's not a huge building. They're just right. very thrifty. They're, they're, they're local and they just help, help make a, a, a positive impact in the community. That's, That's really awesome. cool. Yeah, I, That's I really love, cool. I love your take on that too, because it's, it's almost easier for me to just, Oh, we're going to support this come, you know, this mm -hmm. one here because they're the ones that everybody knows. And then you, you can almost ride, you know, their mm -hmm. coattails, you know, a little bit. And that's just being lazy is what it is instead of putting forth some effort. On well, it. it's uh, the power of a story. On my ha my behalf, that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's the power of the story that you got to take into consideration. When you're able to tell a local story that people can relate to of people in the community they may have interacted to, with in the past or know someone that, that has, has interacted with them or suffered from a, a specific condition or something of that nature, um, being able to tell that story becomes a powerful story. And if, if you're able to tell it correctly, you're helping, you're helping the organization. Now and that's, you get, that's why you do it. Do you give away a, a system every month? Not or? every month, okay, not every so. month. Uh, it, about every other month, we're either giving away a free HVAC system in each market or a free water heater in each, each market. So otherwise it's just like a dollar amount that you've, but every match. month. So that's, that's aside from the give from the, Oh, monetary. okay. So this is on top of monetarily. That. We have, we have a 12 month giving calendar uh, with an organization in each market that is local that we give to. And we just plan out that giving. Now, do you have somewhere where people can apply for that? Like, do they like on our website say, you know, we're not that cool yet. <laughs> Do you just, just send out like I, an I email about, or something like that and have people like, Hey, this is a lot, yeah. a lot of mail. Well, I thought, I thought before about mm -hmm. like, we get asked a lot, the more people learn about it. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be easier just to send them to a landing page on a website mm -hmm. that says, Hey, we, we want to give to everybody. Um, but we, you know, we have right. to go through this process. Right. We, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, we okay, well, 90 day goal. Awesome. Um, so I may yeah. take that idea now. Thanks, Trish. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so, Matt, I'd like to yeah. kind of dive into uh, how you've gone about building this team because mm -hmm. you mentioned a yeah. lot of different roles, and, and the smaller contractors are gonna be like, I don't even know what some of these roles are, like media buyer and all this stuff, right? Because you they're, shouldn't, yeah, I, I just want to be clear, you yeah, shouldn't. but. How like so you've you've obviously had to build this team and mm -hmm. decide what was next along the yep. way. So what does your process look like as somebody that works mm -hmm. inside of uh, the Max Service Group to look for both internal or how do you, I guess let me start there. How do you decide what is an internal versus an external mm -hmm. uh, marketing person or agency that you want to work with? 
Yep. So uh, really, it's it's quite simple. It's it's two factor. Obviously, there's some financial savings if you bring it in internal in in some cases, but more importantly, you ha you have to be confident that the performance of what of the product you're going to put out in the market is not going to suffer. So if you bring in someone, bring in someone good. Don't <laughs> try to find. So don't put resumes out there and find the the cheapest person that you can get. So the high school kid that just graduated like three weeks ago is that doesn't have any marketing experience. It's probably not the best idea for social media. Who's going, to, who's going to train them? Like, right. if you're not a marketing person. Somebody that doesn't know how to use social media. Right. So <laughs> it's like if I'm hiring a role internal, it's going to be someone with experience. It's 100% going to be someone with experience and they're going to be really amazing at what they do and a really amazing human being. So how do we know that they're good though? Because like there's like on the air conditioning side, plumbing side, like people can come in here and they can... They can you know, you know if they're the full of shit them. pretty quick. But I know really fast if they don't know what they're talking about. Right. And then if a, a marketing, you know, guru comes in here and they know all of the buzzwords, they know, right. you know, everything to say. And I'm like, dang, that guy knows what he's doing. Right. Let's hire him. And then like a year later, it's like, we ain't grown, but you're expensive. Start, start them off as a, start them off as a freelancer for your business. Oh, okay. Also, there's, there, this this is coming from a very genuine place if they don't work out don't be afraid to let someone go because it's not fair to you or them to or keep the rest your team. team yeah i mean think of it. it's not fair to them because if it's something that's not going to work out that means you're you're just stringing them along and letting them miss out on opportunities to join another team that they may be a perfect fit for man i gotta pick my feet up you step on my toes <laughs> And then, then it's just it, from there, it's just prove it out, <laughs> prove it out. That's it. That's it. I'll, we're in the beautiful part of marketing. So much of it is, is proving it out and just showing the data behind it and, and making decisions. So you're saying just ask, ask for proven results. Oh, yeah. of show, show me, show me the results. Get me in contact with some people that you've worked with that um, can vouch for you. Hell, all these Facebook groups in this industry, you can post, hey, can someone look into this? And I guarantee you're going to have at least five different people that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Please find someone that knows what they're doing that will actually be able to will say, hey, hell yeah, give me, you know, give me the information they've given you. I'll look at it and see if it see if it makes sense. I'd be more than happy to get on a phone call with you and them to be able to have a conversation to see if it's true bullshit or if it's the, or if they're they're speaking truth into it. So I, there are resources and don't be afraid to ask this industry. It's a blue collar industry with a lot of good people that want to help. That's all our businesses are. We're service businesses, right? We, we genuinely, all we do every day is help people. So you're going to find people that are willing to step up and help you and, and guide you and, and give you pointers. Just ask. They, that's all, that's the whole help. reason that we started this show was to right. help those and help answer unasked questions. Right. Uh, so, how about this question that leads into once they've been hired on they're on your team? What if we've never, we don't have a scorecard for how to measure their success. Yep. Um, what's a good number? Like what's a good KPI? Like it's, I know it's a buzzword KPI and in like, you know, right. I get those emails every day and they never even get looked at. Uh, but that's another topic for, I'll take day. you off my email right. list. Just take it, take me off because I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> I have a special folder for it. Had a lot of unreads, but it's cool. But but so like once we get to that point, we've hired someone. Like, how do we know that they're successful? I mean, obviously, we need to know a little bit about them. Yeah, about about that position. If we're hiring, well, I think position. I think this really gets into contractors. So they know they need marketing. But they, but, want their, their, but they want to put their head in the sand. Too. Here's well, the key, though, guys. They want to put their head in the sand. They don't want to, they don't want to learn about it. So you're, they have you're no idea if someone's pulling their chain. You're probably going to be working with an agency first. So you're learning something from them. This, you're, not, you're rarely going to have someone that's starting up an HVAC company and immediately they're bringing in someone for marketing. So you're going to be working with someone on your marketing. That someone is going to teach you some level of something. We can all hope it's right. Um, but they're going to teach you something. You're going to build up that knowledge base and start knowing what questions to ask and be able to see, okay, does this stink or not, right? Yeah. And that's when that's when you, 
because really you should be working with someone for a while before it's like, okay, this makes sense. You have some type of substantial investment and relationship with an agency before you make the decision to bring them internally, because you've got to be able to make justify financial and performance, right? So mm -hmm. you have to be a, a sizable business to be able to, to, to have the workload, to, you know, give them all the information they need, all the tools they need and be able to provide them a successful environment to thrive in. Um, and, and then, you're going to have some of the knowledge knowledge from from working with an agency up to that time. So there, there's a lot that you've invested into that already. But there's a lot of people out there, and I've been guilty of this myself, of just approving the the uh, AMX <laughs> transaction and be like, well, they got paid, so they better be doing their job, and we'll see you next month when I pay you again. That's on you, bro. I know. Well, I'm guilty of that, but I know that I'm not the I'm not the abnormal. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that that it happens a lot in the industry. Josh talks about it all the time. I mean, I give Josh money, and then I'm like, oh, Josh, don't call me back until you need more money. What money? Uh, right. <laughs> no, I'm just, true story. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I mean, <laughs> it, that's on yeah. that's on you as an owner. Yeah. That's that's honestly on you on an own as an owner. And if you're not if you're not making the investments to to learn a little bit about the marketing side so that you can be able to hold someone accountable, you don't deserve an internal marketer. Good point. You can't just this industry is not the way it was 30 years ago where you could be a really good air conditioning guy that's got a great personality and then you can be successful with this. I mean, you still you need to learn other things than just how to fix an air conditioning unit. You gotta grow. It's 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 part of becoming a good leader, becoming a good manager, becoming a, a good professional at all. It's, it's it's the growth component of it. And and you you as a as a leader of the organization, you have to be deserving of being able to bring people into that role. And and that's that's something that you got to hold yourself accountable to in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And I can yeah. I, I can speak on the agency side. So I just did a it hasn't aired yet a podcast with Ryan Redding and Crystal Williams and Stephen Christopher, and we had a awesome conversation Ooh, about shout out that yeah right the dynamic between uh contractors and marketing agencies and i can tell you just from listening to them talk and knowing how i feel we want to hear from our clients we want you to ask questions it's okay hey, not, what you're you not stupid me offline, josh you ain't <laughs> told me that you told me Tersh, stop. You ain't stop supposed to. Now. You ain't supposed to say that when we're live. <laughs> but let's let's stop there though, because that is an absolutely critical thing that people have to consider. When you're working with an agency, they are a part of your business. They are a part of your business. Marketing is only as successful as the operations. If the operations suck, I don't need to be here, right? right. You, you. Oh man, that's a whole it, it other is, podcast episode. It is one hundred percent important that marketing is aligned with operations. Uh, and that's why I'm in every, I'm in the operations uh, calls in the morning where we go through, you know, the, the three and five day calls, what we're looking at, what we're able to do today, what we need to do tomorrow, because not only do, do I need to be able to, to influence what's happening in client care or with our dispatch team, but from a marketing perspective, then I take that message to our marketing team. And we know what to work on, on a daily basis when we need to pivot. This is a very reactionary you're always doing proactive things. Don't get me wrong. There's always SEO. There's always you know optimizing your campaigns, everything of that nature. But a big part of driving marketing and be successful is being reactionary within the business because your day to day needs within a within an HVAC and plumbing because our consumers don't they don't plan these purchases right. These are yeah. these are problems that happen immediately. So to be able to say you plan all your marketing, that's false. You have you have to be looking at it day to day because that's when you see the growth. Because marketing's responsibility is to get that dispatch board to a hundred percent each and every day. So that's our responsibility. What happens if you have if you have an agency that's outside? How do you include them? I know I, I know from talking with mm -hmm. uh, Stephen and everything else, like the big companies including their agencies into you know, a call, a zoom call or whatever, yeah. but how do you, ha how do you have that interaction? If you are the, the guy picking up the phone call in the field and trying to get them scheduled on, you know, Sarah, you listen, I, I heard text messages, pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Emails, pretty cool. Um, even if you are smaller, you have the ability to communicate, but you got to take the ownership of that. 
you've got to reach out to your account manager if you're working with an agency and say, hey, we really lied on these types of calls today. We could use more. Now, also, also listen to their, their reasoning if they come to you with, hey, this is what we're seeing, this or that. Maybe we need to increase CPL for the bid strategy, whatever. Listen to them, but then you guys make it. Then you guys make a decision together. But you have to include them in the operations. Otherwise, they're going to be doing the same things they were doing yesterday because they they believe it's it's working, until they don't know that it's working. Right? Yeah. So it, it it's part of that onus. If you want to grow, you're going to include marketing in more of your conversations because they they have the keys to fill up the board for you. There's a buddy of mine, John Wyman. He. Uh man, he got into service and then just hit the ground running. And uh, one of the things that really blew me away with John is the fact that like he could spout off his numbers like every day. And he's the one that's just taking off. And I'm like, dang, Mo, like, you know, your um, home advisor costs, your everything, like your, your uh, LSA stuff. Like he knows it, like he, he lives and breathes it all day long. And I'm like, dang, that's like, you're a marketing person. And he was like, no, you got, you got to know those numbers in order to really, you know, yeah. And, and that's, it makes perfect sense too, because like you said, your three day call board or your your five day call board, if it's empty, we got to ramp something up. We got to get the calls coming in. Or if you're a small company, like, you know, I was a couple of years ago, um, we, our phone calls just died. Like, cut off like went from ringing off the hook to zero calls like we thought right, we didn't pay the phone bill like that bad and reached out to the marketing agency and was like what happened and google did an update and we just went down and then they just they it was an error from when they rebuilt the website from the last agency that we we got a big name agency that really screwed the pooch on us no. and then it, instead of rebuilding like just doing away with the site we tried rebuilding it and fixing it and it was horrible so we ended up re you know doing a whole new site and um yeah that's it's tough if you don't communicate with with your agency because i mean very easily i could have just chalked it up to weather or something like that you know right well yes yeah we don't get me wrong we're 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 <laughs> We're weather, uh, we're weather dependent. I just want yeah. to be aware. There, there is a component of weather, but what our job is to make sure we're getting a bigger chunk of the pie each and every day, mm-hmm. right? There's only yeah. so many people looking for our service. Well, you, you need more at bats, right? It's right. like I, I look at it like baseball terminology. We need to get you up to the plate more often. Yeah, as often as possible. Put you in, put you in the leadoff spot, right? Mm-hmm. Try to get you up there yeah. as, as high as possible and get you up to up to bat. After that. Some of that stuff we can help maybe coach and consult on right. if we have some experience. But other than that, we have to get you to that point and then hopefully maybe tweak some things. But it's on you guys to uh, on the contractor side to operationally. And that we talked about this in that same podcast I mentioned, operational excellence and how important oh, sure. it is. Because I and, answering and, the phones is completely awesome. Oh my God. You're gonna no, you're gonna get me it. going. You're gonna get me going, dude. <laughs> I, I, I literally I know what button to push. We love to overcomplicate marketing. I, I think yes. marketers in general really like to overcomplicate it to, I guess, make us feel special or something. But yeah, at it. the end of the day, we build brands. We build brands so people think of us when they need us. Then we create a, we create a net to capture intent. Like that. That's it. So when they think about us, they know where to find us. If they don't think about us, we find them. That's what we do on a daily basis. We create a brand and we capture intent. Yeah. If we're going to be I, honest, like people, all they do is just think about me. So and I mean, think everybody about knows her. He's a big one. effing deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's everybody house. except for my customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody outside of Savannah, apparently. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but um, to, to talk about the, it, and it, it is simple, Matt, and it's as simple as, a, even without hiring an internal marketer or an agency, answer the phone. If you can't answer the phone, have a system to get back in front of that person within five minutes tops. Like five minutes is the absolute maximum, I would say. Like if you're going to do lead sources, Home Advisor, Angie, 
networks, whatever the, what the hot oh, one is boy. today. Oh boy. Oh, I mean, oh, you gotta, you I, gotta have, I, hey, you I, gotta I just, be like all yeah, over I've seen that. Matt's reaction. I gotta hear this. I hear, so people do this all the time. They're like, oh, home advisor sucks. No, your, your, your process sucks. and your process sucks. <laughs> like these are people that have opted in, 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 in some form or fashion, not all of them are going to be leads, but not, not all of any source or platform is lead. It's so Matt, you're, you're telling us you use home advisor. You interact. What? You use home advisor. I spend a lot of money with home advisor every month. Okay. I, I want to talk about this. I've offline. tested probably 20, 25 different lead gen providers that we've used, but we have a process and it's not, Hey, a lead is emailed to me because that's not going to be successful. Lead comes in, they get an email and a text immediately. That text is going to tell them where the phone call that's coming in two minutes, where that phone number is, what that phone number is so that they're going to answer it. And within that two minutes, we're going to, we're going to be the first person to outreach to them to be able to schedule, to be able to schedule that visit. If you're not doing that, these national companies are, you're the, the big national organizations have centralized call centers that are, that are taking that information in and acting on it quickly. So us as medium, small, whatever size company, we've got to be able to mimic and create a process that, that is able to match what theirs is. And it's become so simple and so easy with the way technology has become. But just saying, hey, Home Advisor sucks. They sent me an email. I called them. I called them three hours later, but they already have had three different people out to their <laughs> house. My goal is to be, be at their house before you even call them. Because now I've got them as a client because they trust us. They know if I if we're that good operationally and we're getting their home, the rest of the shit, we're going to figure out and we're going to take care of them because yeah. we took care of that lead and we we cared about their time. Okay, There's so what we, ask, all we have as human beings, you got to be careful and, and, and you've got to value what that time is. Okay, so you mentioned operation excellence and being there fast. Um, how important is it to explain the entire process to the clients? You know, like laying out like a video of what to expect throughout the process, what to expect when you're expecting. Say that one more time. Um, how important is that? Should we be doing that? Should like, uh, because there's a lot of uncertainty in our business, like it, as far as the consumer comes coming in, you know, on average, they're changing it out twice, twice in their lifetime mm -hmm. or, uh, so then it's not something that they're going to do a lot of, so they don't know what to expect. And most of the times there's just a lot of guesswork involved. And so oh, yeah, we've got to set that expectation. That's our job. We right. set the, we set the expectation for the client and like so how do we do that like oh, easy you, you if someone submits a form submission on your website you got a landing page that's probably going to it's probably going to a thank you page embed a video or have or even just write out the steps hey here are the next ten steps of what's going to bring your your home to a comfortable level and that's and, and those are some small things that you can do of saying okay here are the steps here's the value that we bring because also when they're on the phone call with your agents right agents you know. When it gets hot out, we're taking a thousand, two thousand phone calls a day. Um, it's maybe more. It comes down to the point of, of they're not always going to be able to explain the entire process to them. So how can marketing come in and, and insert themselves to be able to help explain that process, help them know that a text message is coming their way? They can GPS the service technician to their home. They're going to get a bio of that technician so they know their name. They know a little bit about them. Right. So it's a human coming into your home at that point, not a service technician. It's almost your friend. Mm -hmm. um, so that it, it's stuff like that. that marketing inserts itself to be able to educate the consumer on, on what the systems and processes and experiences are in place um, so that, that we, we just set, set a proper expectation. You know, the other thing I love about doing that and putting it out there to the world is it holds the rest of your team accountable. Hell yeah. And then they're like, well, this is what your website told me that, well, Tersh had, there was a video of Tersh and he said that you were going to do this. Right. That's not what you did. And so, go as far as explain what the process is once that technician's in your home. Right. Because then that, that even holds them more accountable that I go, no, we're, we're and then we'll show up and we'll, uh, we'll shake your hand and, and fix the issue. No. <laughs> what are they going to do once they're in the home? To be able to come in and say, okay, here, are, here, are, here's what this experience is going to look like. Here's what the process is like, uh, so that they know from beginning to the very end. And when they have a problem until that problem is solved, and your truck is out of the driveway, here's what they're going to expect from you as a company. So, how do you how do you present this scenario? Uh, it, I, I know how I've done it in my videos. Mm -hmm. um, I like to hear your input on it, and that's. Uh, 
if somebody doesn't have the cash to take care of what's going on and we're going to, we have financing available without insulting them saying that you don't have money and we're going to have financing for you. Financing available. I mean, in that video or in that, you know, what to expect, you know, um, I hey, if, like if this is going to be a, huh, right. right. I, I think just setting, having, setting the conversation, right? Just talking to them, being real with them and saying some people rather use our money than theirs. Yeah. Um, so we do have competitive financing rates available to be able to, to come up with a very uh, a fair monthly payment for the investment of your HVAC system, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about how we, how we have that conversation and how we open up the dialogue. If you're like, hey, hey, you can't afford this shit. So here's uh, financing. That's going to go poorly. That's right, right. probably the most terrible way to approach it. But, but like you said earlier, like this isn't something that they're planning on doing. We're not, I mean, most people aren't planning on replacing a system. It just happens. It broke and, and we might not have the cash there. We might can get it in a couple months or whatever, but it's just that conversation that lead into, Hey, you, you may not have expected this to happen. So we have financing available um, for the situation. Right. right. And, and it, you just don't put it in a framework that they, they can't afford it. No one likes to say they can't afford something. Right. Um, that, that kind of goes, I'll show the, you the grin. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go sell my house now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I sold my car. Now I can. <laughs> right. It, but it's it just, it, it's all about the framework of the conversation. Everything, how most things in life are about expectation setting. Setting the proper expectations can go a right. long way. Hey, Matt, you're, uh, it says Facebook user, but I knew this was Sarah, uh, <laughs> right away. She's yelling at me because I said up to five minutes and she's like, no, you already lost it. So Sarah, thank you. We should have probably just thrown, thrown you on this podcast. We've, we've just I know you dispatched to the house already. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> well, and that's the thing. And honestly, so he touched on the technology, but there are integrations and you mm -hmm. guys probably hear that word a lot as a contractor because everything's an integration now because that's the way technology talks to each other. But there are integrations as soon as a home advisor lead comes available in your uh, that matches your criteria, it can send a pre-built right. message, a pre-built email, a, a, a voice a voice message. There's a lot of things that can happen. Mm -hmm. It just, you have to take some time to set it up or to right. find those. You have to find the right technology. Oh, yeah, because we Very all have a lot of, plug. we got a lot of spare time as business owners. You do. You're never doing anything. <laughs> Do podcasting. I, just, I see you on podcasts all the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see, he's never he's just hanging out with me. Right. <laughs> but there, there are people that can help you set it up, right? There, there are oh ask the groups. Help, Josh, the groups just pay for the pay for the investment. Put it yeah. put it into your pricing something to be able to, to do this because it is a it is a viable option. Or I mean unless honestly, you're in Indianapolis, Louisville, Cincinnati, or <laughs> viable option. Especially if you're in those markets. <laughs> I would say the other thing too, and this is how I used to use Home Advisor when I was at the last company I was with. Those notifications came right here. Mm -hmm. I literally had text messages saved on my phone, copy, paste, send, and it was immediate. We didn't do a lot of Home Advisor because we were in a very, very tiny town, but um, it worked. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it was definitely very profitable for us for what we did. And it can work. Anything Absolutely. can work. If you Absolutely. dig deep enough, if you, if you give it three weeks, it's not going to work. Right. You got to, you got to go deeper. You got to stick with something and try to go deeper with it. That's the same, thing with, important. <laughs> yeah, same thing with CRMs. We see that conversation a lot too, right? It, right. You, you can't stop, you know, a third of the way and be like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm terrible. not going to do any more than this. So, right. Um, Matt is if there's, cause I know you're very active, um, mm -hmm. when we talk community, you're very active in the trades community and giving advice, especially to like teams of internal marketers or people that are thinking about those types of things, where can they get a hold of you? Um, LinkedIn's a super easy one. I have a lot of friends on Facebook. Um, if you type in Matthew Tyner, there's not many of us. Um, so <laughs> actually this. This picture behind me, I think, is probably my profile picture, if you want to take that. It is. <laughs> just, so, just so you know. Um, but just connect with me. If you're in some of those groups and you see me talk, yeah, friend request me. I'm completely cool with it. Don't spam me. But you know, I, I, 
Oh, oh, too late. The now. marketing agency is going to see this and going to be like, found Goodbye, him. Matt's <laughs> inbox. Got him. Um, but you connect with me. I, I am always happy to help. It's usually once a week I'm talking to a different contractor. Hell, even maybe one that's here in our local market that may just need a little bit of help or advice. Um, but, you know, we're, it's, God, COVID really made this really a terrible statement, but the whole we're all in this together thing. Like it's true in this industry. We're, we're supporting one another. Um, there's more business to go around than any one company can take. Mm -hmm. um, I want clients, if they don't go with us, I want them to be served well. Well, it's good to have a, a, a competitor that knows what they're doing. Oh, yeah. And and we'd I'm all rather have competition. good competition, right? Telling, all if, all as day. long as everyone's getting taken care of, we're all going to we're all going to have a slice of that pie and all going to do mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. <laughs> Hang on. Sarah must have dropped this. So there you go. <laughs> Search Matthew Tyner. I'm kind of a big deal because he is. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> awesome. Matt, this cool. was this was it's, great. I really I'm really glad we were able to get you on. This was yeah, uh, this was a lot of fun. Let's yeah. plan to do it again. We can maybe we can talk a little bit more about some of the marketing systems, process, all that stuff. And yes, we can do just on how to set up a team. Yeah, the, just the thing that we um the stuff we touched on, just rehash some things mm -hmm. that we've done in the past that worked. And obviously, if it works, we're going to stop doing it. So that's just what we do. Um, and we need to start doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool, Matt. Well, I really appreciate you coming and, and yeah, spending totally. time with us. Awesome, guys. I, I appreciate it. And again, if anyone wants to reach out, just find me. Let's chat. Let's have a conversation. Maybe we jump on the phone and uh, make our businesses better. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thanks, if Matt. anybody has any questions, don't hesitate. Connect with Matt. Uh, reach out to Josh and, uh, and I um, or go to the website. Yeah. Servicebusinessmastery.com and bottom right. Leave us a voice memo. But I hope you have a wonderful and safe week. And until we talk again next time, we'll see y'all. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.